So what does true composability actually mean? It comes about when you can actually disaggregate all these major resources in the server and you can have these resources housed in effectively in different chassis. So you could have a chassis for a GPUs, you could have a chassis for an accelerator set, you could have another chassis that houses your storage devices uh, like hard drives or flash storage and so on. And then basically what you have is you have a tightly integrated fabric so that all of these chassis are connected together on that fabric. And from these different appliances, if you wish, you can assign different amounts of storage or GPU or accelerator or memory depending on what application you want to run. So essentially you're combining these things and making a system or a compute element for that particular application on the fly. Now, one of the things about composable architecture is that uh, you have to think about it more in terms of utility computing, which means that you have to build it in such a manner that the applications themselves should be able to demand more or less resources of a particular type. And that gets automatically plumbed into that application space. So I think uh, composable architecture is just starting out. Uh, there are lots of companies that talk about composability, but at a much smaller scale. Uh, there are companies that talk about composability in a single blade chassis or a single rack, for example, where you can provide a limited amount of resources that can be combined on the fly. But that's not interesting enough if you're talking to these service providers, enterprise data centers, uh, cloud providers, uh, what they really care about uh, from the point of view of comp composability is multifold. So at the base level, uh, they care about resource utilization, right? Am I optimizing the resources of all the devices that I have? Um, one of the things we know uh, when you look at applications is that the application workloads keep changing over time. Uh, not just in cloud uh, data centers, but also in the enterprise as well. And so the next question that you have to answer from the point of view of these data centers is, am I getting the right mix of resources uh, for running my very specific applications? And as time changes, uh, can I modify that mix of resources for each workload? Now, interestingly enough, uh, the world is gone from a scale up environment where you're essentially going to multi-socket machines and so on to a more scaled out environment. And what we mean by scale out is that as you need more resources, you simply add more compute elements, discrete compute elements. And the kinds of workloads we're talking about in this scaled out world are analytics, high performance computing, AI, machine learning, and so on. And even the big data workloads, Hadoop, Apache Spark, and so on. And so for these kinds of scaled out world and scaled out environments, you don't really need virtualization or containerization and so on. One of the things about a scaled out environment is that the CPUs become a bottleneck. And that's because they are responsible for moving all the data. So when you're thinking about moving data from one node to another node to another node, it's the CPU that's in the middle of all those transactions. And that is highly inefficient. And it sort of results in a reduction in processing efficiency. The CPU is doing a job that it should not be doing. And so what you really need is a method to move this data more efficiently. You need something that can offload this data movement function from the CPUs. And so that the CPUs can simply be involved in their processing functions and not anything more. And then in the scaled out world, what you really need is that you should have the ability to mix in any amount of computing and storage resources and these peripheral resources for the period of time that you're running this particular application. And when you no longer need those resources, you should be able to put them back into the shared pool. And then from that shared pool, you can reassign those resources to other workloads on demand. So that's what true composability means. And that implies that you have to architect this composability from the ground up. You have to be, think about being able to scale to literally tens or hundreds of racks and thousands of servers. Uh, you have to think about the ability to disaggregate every single component in the data center and then bind them on demand using this programmatic model. Uh, you have to worry about what the fabric looks like that allows you to basically have the same bandwidth and the same latency characteristics from point to point, not just within the rack, but also across racks and across the entire data center. And so all of these things mean that you have to start really thinking about composability slightly differently. You have to think about taking commodity devices, industry standard components like the CPUs and the GPUs and the FPGAs and other accelerators and so on, 
and then being able to house them in these purpose-built appliances if you wish with the right fabric connection so that you can assign these resources on demand using software and automation and so on. And you should have support for all of these different kinds of application workloads over time. And that's what composability actually means. If you think about the consumption model of composable architecture, the implication is simply that everything is a utility, that I can turn on a switch and get the right mix of resources for that particular application. And when I no longer need it, I can simply turn off the switch and those resources get back, put back into a shared pool. So on the fly composition, a programmatic model, an automation that allows you to essentially build these compute functionality on the fly. That's what true composability means. And once you get true composability, it no longer matters what kind of applications you're running. You basically have the ability to support anything under the sun, whether you're talking about multi-tenancy, or you're talking about performance or scalability, all of these come naturally uh, once you have a true composable infrastructure. I think we are in the middle of a sea change in computer systems design, and I'm kind of excited to watch this evolution. Thank you.